Matilda Wormwood was an extraordinary little girl. Her mind was so nimble and so quick that her abilities should have been noticed to the most half-witted of parents. But Mr. and Mrs. Wormwood were so wrapped up in their silly little lives that they failed to notice anything unusual about their daughter. By the age of one and a half, Matilda was perfect, and she knew as many words as most grown-ups. Her parents and brother called her a noisy chatterbox and told her sharply that small girls should be seen and not heard. with that book, boy. I'm a girl. And she keeps trying to tell me stories. Stories, Harry. Stories. Who wants stories? Stories? I don't want no stories. Oh, be quiet. I'm trying to pull together the biggest business deal of my life, and I'm stuck here listening to this. Well, excuse me, but I've got this old house to look after. Dinners don't microwave themselves, you know. <laughs> I'm off to bleach my roots, and I shan't be talking to you for the rest of the evening, you horrid little man. <laughs> Bookworm! You, this is all your fault with your stupid books and your stupid reading. But I didn't do anything. That's not right. Right? I'll give you right. You go on to school in a few days and you won't be getting anything right there. No, you'll see your new headmistress, Miss Trenchbull. I've told her all about your smarty pants ideas. Imagine what she's gonna do with a little goblin like you. Now off to bed, you bookworm. Sometimes you have to make a little bit of mischief. 
the slip of a boat, there's a tiny revolt. The seat of a wall in the creak of a floorboard. A storm can begin with the flap of a wing. The tiniest might packs the mightiest sting every day. Starts with the tick of a clock or escape. Starts with the click of a book. If you're stuck in your story and you want to get out, you don't have to cry, you don't have to shout. Cause if you're little, you can do a lot. You must let the little thing like little stop you. If you sit around and let them get on top, you won't change a thing. Just because you find that life's not fair, it doesn't mean that you just have to grin and bear it. If you always Every afternoon, Matilda was left all alone in the house. Her brother went to school, her father went off to work, and her mother went to play bingo in a town eight miles away. And so, Matilda spent most of her time at the public library at the village. But on the first day of school, the new students, including Matilda of Crunchham Hall Primary School, slowly approached the gate, unaware of the dangers that awaited them. Like you are curious, so innocent I 
thousand questions but unless you want to sell it then I'm gonna teach you I think I do You listen here, my dear, you'll be punished as a billy If you step out of line and if you cry it will be double You should stay out of trouble and remember to be extremely careful Why? 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 Did you hear what she said? Just you wait for present class. My name is Miss Honey and today is a very special day. It's your first day of school. Now, does anyone know their two times tables? One times two is two, two times two is four, two times three is six, two times four is eight, two times five is ten. Good heavens, Matilda! Okay, this one is much harder, so it's all right if you can't get it. Two times 487, if you took the time, would be... 974. What? Okay, wow. Uh, let's try some English. Can anyone read this sentence? Is it tomato? No, lavender, but that's a very good word. Yes. Now read sentences. Miss Honey. Matilda, that's fantastic. You can read full sentences. Now, class, it's time for recess. Yeah! strongly that Matilda needed to be put in a higher grade that she slowly approached Miss Trunchbull's office as she tried to muster up the courage to knock on the door. Knock on the door, Jenny. Just knock on the door. Don't be pathetic. Knock on the door, Jenny. There's nothing to fear. You're being pathetic. It's just a door. You've seen one before. Just knock on the door. Look at you trying to hide, silly. Standing outside the principal's office like a little girl. It's just pathetic. Oh. Look at you hesitating, hands shaking. You should be embarrassed, you're not a little girl. It's just pathetic. Knock on the door, Jenny. What are you waiting for? Just knock on the door. Perhaps I will wait. She's probably having a meeting or something and won't want to be interrupted. If anything, caution in these situations is sensible. One should avoid confrontation when possible. I'll come back later then. <laughs> But this little girl, this miracle, knock on the door, Jenny, just knock on the door, don't be pathetic. Enter. Yes? 
Don't just stand there like a wet piece of tissue. Get on with it. Yes, yes, Miss Trunchbull. It's about Matilda Wormwood. Daughter of Harry Wormwood, of Wormwood Motors. Excellent man. Told me to watch out for the little brat. Now, what has she done this time? Oh, no, Miss Trunchbull. Matilda doesn't seem like that kind of child at all. Huh. Miss Honey. <laughs> what is our school motto? Bambinitum es magitum. Bambinitum es magitum. Children are maggots. I believe that Matilda is a genius. A genius? Haven't I just told you that she's pff, a gangster? But she knows all her times tables. So she's picked up a few tricks, eh? But she reads. So can I. Now get out and stop wasting my time. In my opinion, Matilda should be moved up to the top class here at Cruncham Hall Primary School. We can't just put her in with the 11-year-olds. What about the rules? I believe that Matilda is an exception to the rules. An exception to the rules in my school. Look at my trophies, see how my trophies gleam in the sunlight, see how they shine. What do you think it took to become English hammer throwing champion? 1969. Do you think in that moment, my big moment came, that I treated the rules with casual disdain? Well, like no! As I stepped up to the circle, did I change my plan? Hmm, what? As I chalked up my palms, did I wave my hands? I did not. As I started my spin, did I look at the view? Did I drift off and dream for a minute or two? Do you think I faltered or amended my rotation? Do you think I altered my intended elevation? As the hammer took off, did I change my grunt? From the grunt I had practiced for many a month Not a jot, not a dot, did I stray from the plot Not a detail of my throat was adjusted or forgotten Not even hammer left my hands And sailed up above the stands Did I let myself go? No, 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 no! Now, get out. Stop being pathetic, Jenny. Stop pretending, Jenny, that you're going to march in there and give them a piece of your mind. Leave it alone, Jenny. The more that you try, the more you'll just look like a fool. This is not your problem. You've not got the spine. You are a teacher, just go back to school.
Instead, she's found me. Pathetic little me. And another door closes and Jenny
Matilda, can I ask you a question? Do all those brains in your head give you a headache? No, it's fine. It just fits. I think I'll stick around just in case your brains start leaking out of your ear. You will need some help. What is your name? I'm Lavender, and I think it's best if we're best friends. Hey, Matilda, be careful with that big brain of yours. If Miss Trunchbull thinks you're too smart for your own good, you don't want to think about what she would do. Somewhere along the way, my dear, you've made an awful error. You oughtn't blame yourself now. Come along. Kid. When Trenchbull decides you're guilty, you're squished. Squished! Yesterday, she caught Julius Rotwiggle eating a gobstopper during science. She just picked him up, swung him around, and threw him out the, the window. window! Don't listen to them. That's trying to scare us. Do you think she's going to put me in chokey? <gasps> They say it's a cupboard in her office. They should throw children into. They say she's lined with nails and spikes and bits of broken glass. There's a place you 
from a rare but chronic sleep disorder, narcolepsy. It is characterized by bursts of chronic fatigue and falling asleep suddenly without any warning. When he fell asleep, we put him under the coats for safety, didn't we? Didn't we? Yeah! Narcolepsy! He will probably think he's in bed when he wakes up. Oh. Is it time for school yet, Mum? Oh! Hello, Miss Trunchbull. <laughs> Just so you all know, she is my best friend. Over the next couple of weeks, it became very clear that Miss Honey was right and Matilda should be put in the highest grade. But Miss Trunchbull became more and more horrible and was always looking for a reason to get Matilda in trouble. Started, therefore, she's not guilty. You're guilty! Because you are a thief, a fiend, a crook, and I shall cut you! I shall pound you! Miss Honey has allowed her weakness and filth to permeate to your miserable excuses for children. And you, Matt, standing there like the sweetest sweet in the beating heart. 
you're not fit to be at this school. Matilda will be punished for her crime! <laughs> What's up? <laughs> it appears you like my private chocolate cake, do you? Now you're going to eat the entire thing in front of everyone. Bring it in. There you go, Bruce Bob Trotter. Eat every last bite, starting with a nice primary school and was never seen again. Her reign of tyranny was over and the students were finally free to learn. Mr. and Mrs. Wormwood got in trouble with the Russian mob and had to flee to Spain. Miss Honey begged with them to let Matilda stay with her so she could finish her education in England. They said yes and Miss Honey adopted Matilda. They loved each other very much and lived happily ever after. <laughs> 